It's a love that I never experienced before. Oscar Bolin is the love of my life. They'd probably call it a crazy kind of love. Others might say it's a bad romance. Is she crazy? Can you say wacko? But whatever you call it, it works for them. It has to. Oscar has no one else but me. Their marriage, a leap of faith, a road best not taken. But she's taking it anyway. Any idea how many times you've made this trip? Well, I've been coming down this road for 20 years, twice a week. So roughly over 4,000 times. That's true dedication, devotion, and she always knows where he is at night. It's because he lives here. Death Row, Florida State Prison. Rosalie's beloved husband is a convicted serial killer awaiting execution for the last 18 years. For him, orange is the old black. Oscar Ray Bolin, the vicious murderer, convicted killer on death row. Hey, Oscar, what do you have to say today? The one-time Florida truck driver found guilty of the brutal 1986 murders of three young women. You are sentenced to death. He is the evil in this world. He's a judge from hell. He's a Nazi. He is a cold-blooded killer. People look at you as kind of a crazy one to be married to a man who's on death row. She believes her husband is innocent, and she says she can prove it. I've been waiting for this for 20 years. A notorious story that began decades ago, but it's about to reignite the FBI crime lab as a target. Were you for a second worried, doubtful about whether he was innocent? Never, not for a second. Tonight, one woman, her four daughters, the death row stepfather one of them finally meets. I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> I imagine you have. Three grieving families and the story that just keeps getting bigger and more bizarre. This picture changed the course of my life in a split second. You say you're trying to free an innocent man, but some people would say you're trying to free a killer. I want him dead. And if I could kill him myself, I would. And that's the key question for you right here tonight. Is she trying to free an innocent man or a killer? Good evening, everyone. Elizabeth has the night off. And it was that notorious story first seen here back in 1996. It's about to make headlines all over again with two new hearings now coming. Explosive accusations against the FBI crime lab that helped put her husband away. But does she now have the evidence to free him or is this just evidence of love? Once again, Deborah Roberts. I've found myself in the last 18 years. You found yourself? Mm hmm Being married to Oscar? Yeah. He saved my life, actually. He really did. How could he save your life, though, when he's behind bars? To answer that question and to understand now, you have to understand then. The former Rosalie Martinez had everything she could want. Marriage, motherhood, money. The triple crown with a mansion on Tampa's Hickory Creek Boulevard. I had very expensive jewelry. Three carat diamond earrings on each ear. Six carat diamond ring. $500,000 house. Mercedes. The wife of a prominent attorney, she lived in the lap of luxury with four beautiful young daughters and cameras recording every red letter occasion. But Rosalie says something was missing, as she first told us back in 1996. I wanted to break out. I wanted to be loved, like I've never been loved before. Passion. Somebody just to put you on a pedestal. Not with material things, but emotions. How could she trade all those jewels for jail? That fur for a felon? Rosalie remembers the moment she first laid eyes on Oscar Bolin. There was no spark at first. She was working in the public defender's office assigned to his case. They opened the door, and there's just a young man standing there. His back is towards me, and he turns around. He said, who are you? I said, I'm here to help you. And I think I said, I'm your angel. Over a two-year period, they grow closer, but law comes before love. Then, for Rosalie, a seismic revelation. She believes Oscar's innocent. The documentation that I've gone through and the reports are totally conflicting. I was sent there 
for a purpose, a divine purpose. And I became obsessed with it. I wasn't going to let anybody stand in my way. Including her husband, who she says gives her an ultimatum. It's the Bolin case or him. It was a knee-jerk reaction, don't tell me what to do, and here we are. Would you say that you married Oscar in kind of a, a fit of stubbornness? Yes. I was going to take a stand, and I didn't care what people thought. And that stand, marrying her client, is a jaw-dropping move, done almost solely to draw attention to Oscar's case. But along with that comes a wrenching decision, agreeing that her husband will have primary custody of their children. Many people would say, come on, you've got to know if you married a guy who's in prison that that's going to affect them. I wasn't thinking. It's still hard for me to admit that. Rosalie Martinez. But she can admit wife, that her strategy pays off money. big time. Is she crazy? Can you say wacko? Even landing the happy couple here on 2020 back in 1996. I love it. It was a tiny little wedding shown to an audience of some 12 million viewers. I'm shaking, I'm very nervous. It's my wedding day. But there would be no flowers or walk down the aisle. AT&T has a correct call from... The new Mr. and Mrs. Bolin exchange vows over a speakerphone with a photo standing in for the groom. Oscar, do you take Rosalie to be your lawful wedded wife? Yes, I do. Rosalie, do you take Oscar to be your lawful wedded husband? Yes, I do. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Congratulations. Look, thank you. Oscar? Oscar. Hey. Listen. I'm <laughs> you a kiss. You're blowing me a kiss? Their honeymoon is in this courtroom just three days later to hear if Oscar would be given life or death for one of the murders. And, uh, you are sentenced to death for the murder of Terry Lynn Matthews. Rosalie is devastated. That was nearly 20 years ago. And while some might be celebrating with the traditional anniversary gift of fine china, Rosalie and Oscar make do with prison cafeteria plastic. And not such fond memories of appeal after appeal, conviction after conviction, 11 trials all told. The biggest misconception of Oscar is that he's a monster and that he's a murderer and he's not. He's a good person. Though her husband's confined 23 hours a day, alone in a six by nine cell, Rosalie insists he's a wonderful partner, though not a traditional one. I can't ever expect him to change the oil in my car or take the garbage out or... or go to the movies with you or hold your hand on a cold night. No, it's not none of those things. It's, um, he puts me on an emotional pedestal. He listens. He's there completely, 100%. Nothing's more important than I am. This is a letter he just wrote me this past Thursday. So that's Oscar right. sends his so wife love letters and hand-drawn cards day, practically right. every day. And with no Hallmark yes, shop on death row, he creates each one himself. You have been my dream girl from the moment we first met, thinking of you every minute of every day. And yeah. what do you make of it when you get these? They're just so special. They're priceless. There's nothing, I, I wouldn't want anything else. Not a diamond, not a car, not a fur coat. And you keep them all? I do. I, I couldn't bear to throw any of them away. I think the art of lovemaking is probably in these cards and letters. Lovemaking, a delicate subject in this relationship. People will ask, do you have conjugal visits? Have you consummated your relationship? I find it very interesting why people would be interested in my sex life. It's no one's business and, you know, that's not part of our relationship. Does it matter to you? No, not anymore. No. What does matter most, she says, is proving her husband's innocence. A licensed private investigator and mitigation specialist herself, Rosalie is leaving no stone unturned. I just want people to listen that there are innocent people who are wrongfully convicted. It happens. And she shows us an explosive report slamming a top FBI agent that could lead her husband to a new trial. When we come back, a closer look at crime scene photos. This picture changed the course of my life in a split second. What she's hoping will get him out 
and what the families of his three young victims are hoping will keep him in for death by lethal injection. 30 years is long enough for this insect and some human to be alive. Stay with us. We continue with 2020's Evidence of Love. Here now, Deborah Roberts. Tampa, Florida, a city of crisscrossing waterways and highways. Today, a buzzing metropolis. But in 1986, this Gulf Coast city is a sleepy destination for retirees. It's in this slower, more quaint Tampa that Natalie Blanche Holly is growing up. And you can see Blanche here and me here. Anita Holly, Blanche's older half-sister. Give me a sense of Blanche's personality. Um, outgoing? She was quite gregarious. She was happy. Somebody you'd want to talk to. She was so beautiful. Wow. Was the key heartbreaking word. On January 25, 1986, Blanche leaves work from a local fast food restaurant and never makes it home. My ex-husband calls me and says, I have some news, um, your sister's dead. She'd been murdered. Natalie Blanche Holly had been stabbed about 12 times in her upper torso, and her body had been dumped about 12 to 15 miles from where her car was found. A stunning crime, but residents of Tampa barely noticed. That same day, a bigger story pushes Blanche Holly right off the front page. It is the worst disaster in the history of the American space program. The space shuttle Challenger is destroyed. All seven astronauts on board are killed. Eleven months pass and the Holly case runs cold. Then, on December 5th, a second dead woman found north of Tampa. 26-year-old Terry Lynn Matthews, a bank clerk who never made it home either. Right over here is where Terry's body was dumped, right here on the embankment. Detective Gary Kling of the Pasco County Sheriff's Office. She was wrapped in a hospital sheet. We noticed that she had several stab wounds in the chest area. She also had blunt trauma, basically wounds to her head, which was caused by a heavy object. Terry Lynn was last seen here on a post office security camera, picking up her mail after work. Her car door was open, lights were on, and she had mail that she had retrieved from her post office box scattered on the ground. It's a mystery, but police have barely put up the crime scene tape when there's a third grim discovery. There was another young lady discovered in Hillsborough County on the same day, Stephanie Collins. The 17-year-old high schooler was reported missing when she never made it to church choir practice. A month later, Stephanie's body is found, a half hour's drive from where Terry Lynn Matthews was discovered. When Terry Matthews' body was found and subsequently Stephanie Collins on the same day, it was extremely shocking for our communities. It left a lot of people alarmed, a lot of people called in frightened. Blanche Holly, Terry Matthews, and Stephanie Collins, three young women abducted, beaten, and dumped, all within a 20-mile radius. Could the murders be linked? Police have no way of knowing, and the investigation stalls. Even a reward for information goes unclaimed. What is it like for the family all of these months and months and nothing? You try to tuck the pain away and deal with it a little bit at a time because it's it's paralyzing. Then after four painful years, a break. A Crime Stoppers tipster puts detectives in touch with Cheryl Jo Kobe, who has an incredible story about her ex-husband. His name, Oscar Ray Bolin. Cheryl Kobe admitted being at home one evening when Mr. Bolin walked in and threw a purse down in front of her and the fact that she saw a driver's license of a female that was in the purse. He told her that he had just killed the girl. That was the Natalie Blanche Holly homicide. Then an even bigger shocker. Cheryl Colby also reveals she was with Oscar the night Stephanie Collins went missing. This time saying it wasn't just a purse she saw, but a person. 
Cheryl Kobe. Went with Mr. Boland to an area in Northern Hillsborough County off Morris Bridge Road and actually observed him dump the body of Stephanie Ann Collins out of the truck on the roadside. But what about the third murdered woman, Terry Lynn Matthews? Police reach out to other Boland family members, including Oscar's half-brother, Philip. When we met with Philip Boland, he told us of the night of Terry's murder. When he walked out to where Oscar was, he saw a body wrapped in a sheet. And at that point, Oscar Boland struck her several times in the head. The noose now tightening around one person, but it's fibers found at all three crime scenes that ultimately tie Oscar Boland to all three victims. We actually took evidence uh, the, that were covered at the crime scene uh, in different samples, and we sent those to the FBI laboratory in Washington, D.C. And that's where the FBI laboratory was able to link forensically those cases. We've got a hair match from his head to the Stephanie Collins case that matches his head hair. The FBI laboratory also found wool fiber that connected the Terry Lynn Matthews case, the Stephanie Collins case, and the Natalie Blanche Holland homicide case also, all three cases. Finally, police believe they found their killer, a serial killer. There is no way Oscar A. Bowen is innocent. We've got overwhelming evidence. We've got him linked forensically with these homicide cases. Oscar Bolin works as a trucker, but when police go to arrest him, he wasn't traveling the open road. They find him here in Ohio's Lebanon prison, serving 25 to 75 years for kidnapping and rape. Bolin is arrested and brought to Tampa. By the time he stands trial years later, he says he can't remember where he was the nights of the three murders. This defendant, Oscar Ray Bolin, caused the death of Terry Lynn Matthews. There is no tie, there is no connection to Oscar Ray Bolin to this offense. The defense goes on the attack, saying the evidence is circumstantial, witnesses lied, and that the state is setting Oscar up. The prosecution will never admit what they did. I'm an innocent for the murder of Terry Lynn Matthews. I have maintained my innocence all along. I don't feel you were very impartial at all. Each murder is tried separately, yet through all the testimony, the grieving mothers of all three victims are banded together, sitting side by side every day. There was an amazing strength, though, in seeing the three of them together. I can't imagine how it would have been if they'd been alone. They were sisters in pain. They were right there for each other. Sisters all in pain. The time. Sisters in pain. Um, and they learned to love each other and respect each other. They supported each other. After countless days of testimony, multiple trials, and hearings, Oscar's fate is sealed. Advise and recommend to the court that it impose the death penalty upon Oscar Ray Bolin, Jr. Three death sentences for Oscar Ray Bolin. Rosalie distraught, the victim's families elated. I believe there was one death penalty that came back in like less than 10 minutes, less time than you would think it would take to make the vote and press the button for the bailiff. What went through your mind when you heard him say death? It was relief, you know. I, I felt that he got what he deserved, and it's, it's a great sense of relief. But that relief is short-lived. Could the forensic evidence that helped put Oscar Bolin away actually be his ticket to freedom all these years later? Was the FBI wrong? This is what I've been waiting for. And while the verdict ends one nightmare for the families, another is just beginning. And the breaking news comes from us. Now you're telling me that his death is not imminent? No, not at this moment. Uh, what is wrong? Stay with us. Twenty Twenty's evidence of love continues. We're back with Deborah Roberts. With a steel trap mind and fierce devotion, Rosalie Bolin has spent the last 20 years on a mission. Um, he's an innocent man, and a truth will come out. Trying to prove her husband didn't do what a jury says he did, viciously murder three young women. 
Rosalie, some people would say you're deluding yourself. You will find an explanation for everything in the face of this overwhelming evidence. The evidence to me doesn't support a conviction. It does not. Oscar Bolin, for me, has not received a fair trial. And she sifts through that evidence again and again, even if a jury has already considered it and convicted Bolin anyway. No detail escapes this private eye while walking us through her version of events. The shoe tracks were size 10. I know what size my husband wears. He wears a size eight. The shoes don't match. Fingerprints don't match. There's tainted evidence in every aspect of this case. I could pull it apart paper by paper, box by box. And witness by witness, starting with Oscar's ex-wife, Cheryl Jacoby, in a wheelchair suffering from diabetes when testifying against him. I noticed there was blood on the curtains. Cheryl Boland's testimony is incredible. It's not to be believed. It's wife against wife, as the current Mrs. Boland says the ex had a case of show me the money. Well, Cheryl had motive to lie. She was in it for the reward money. $63,000 worth to be exact, but only if there's a conviction. If there's reward money out there today, you want part of it, don't you? Yes, I do. And Rosalie contends Cheryl used that same motivation, reward money, to entice Oscar's half-brother, Philip, to testify. Brother against brother. Oscar's half-brother, Philip Boland, says he saw what looked like it was a body that Oscar was handling. Mm -hmm. How do you discount that? I received two recantations from Philip Bolin. He said he never saw Oscar Bolin with a dead body. So he changed his story? Yes, several times. Three times in six months, and one of those under oath in the murder case of bank clerk Terry Lynn Matthews. I said what you wanted me to say, sir. So somebody put those words in your mouth? Yes, sir. And that somebody? Oscar's ex-wife, Cheryl. In his recantation letter, Philip Bolin wrote, I was told to and coerced into making false statements by Cheryl Jo Kobe. But later, prosecutors and even Philip would say it was Rosalie who coerced him into recanting, an allegation she strongly denies. I have no weapon to influence Philip Bolin into recanting. I don't carry a badge. Despite hearing the reward theory, a jury still convicted Oscar Bolin of murder. You are sentenced to death. 2020's calls to Philip Bolin were not returned. Cheryl Colby died of diabetes in 1992. You're so close to it. Are you able to really clearly see the evidence and be able to look at it objectively? If you looked at the evidence and the testimony, the testimony doesn't comport with the evidence. Evidence or just evidence of love? That's the key question. But Rosalie may be looking at a game changer in her fight, and it's due to this man, Fred Whitehurst. For 20 years, he's been blowing the whistle on corruption at the FBI crime lab. And at the center of it all, a top forensic analyst who's helped convict hundreds of people, Michael Malone. Anything that Michael Malone touched, any evidence, that he touched is not to be trusted. It can't be, the U.S. government agrees with that. Malone initially handled key evidence in all three of Oscar Boland's murder trials. Hair and fiber the FBI used to forensically link all three murders. When I was down in Florida, a couple of analysts came out and, and said, you gotta stop this Michael Malone guy. And now something has. Just last year, the Office of the Inspector General blasted Malone, releasing a scathing 135-page report discrediting his work, the government itself turning on one of its own. The report says Michael Malone repeatedly created scientifically unsupportable lab reports and provided false, misleading, or inaccurate testimony at criminal trials. The culture at the FBI laboratory was one of um, we have to establish guilt, plain and simple. Just yesterday, 2020 tracked down Michael Malone, the man fingered in those FBI accusations. Now retired in Virginia, we asked him about that report. It says you've been responsible for many errors and, and unreliable testimony. No comment. No comment? Right. What about... No comment. In my mind, Michael Malone is a serial killer with a lab coat. And there have been potentially people who have been executed based upon evidence that Michael Malone handled. It's frightening. Frightening.
especially given that her husband could be next in line for execution. If what you say is true, then Oscar Bolin is the unluckiest man alive. I would say so. To have coincidentally been linked to three different murders and to have been convicted so many times. Well, if you have an FBI agent who's making you a serial killer, when actually, in fact, these cases are never been connected, yes, then that would be a very unlucky guy. But is the Malone factor enough to throw out three murder convictions? But they're saying take Malone out of it and there's still overwhelming evidence that links this man to these murders. Then let's do it. If the evidence is so overwhelming, let's do it. Let's try the cases. Let's see if they're correct. Anita Holly, the sister of one of the victims, is outraged at the possibility of a new trial. We're still playing games with this subhuman. Games. Anita Holly thought all of Oscar Boland's legal proceedings had been exhausted until she got the startling news from us. You're telling me that his death is not imminent? No, not at this moment. What is wrong? Take a moment if you need to. 30 years is long enough for this insect subhuman to be alive. I hate him so much. When we come back, dead men talking. Our cameras go where few are allowed. To death row. And there's a shocker about Oscar Bolin that could change everything you've thought until now. Stay with us. So our question for you here tonight, what are you thinking by now? You've seen both sides, the victim's families and Rosalie's. Let us know on our Facebook page and on Twitter. Use the hashtag ABC2020. And when we come back here, what Rosalie's daughters think all these years later. Later, a first meeting like you've never seen. Visiting your stepfather on death row. I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> you have. And asking your mother point blank. I mean, did you ever think what we have to deal with? Coming up on 2020. <laughs> 2020 continues with evidence of love. Once again, here's Deborah Roberts. Oscar Ray Bolin, convicted at 10 trials over the last 20 years for the murders of Natalie Blanche Holly, Terry Matthews, and Stephanie Collins. I covered a lot of court cases and sat across from a lot of defendants. And there was just something about this guy, just the flatness of his affect. Who was this person existing in the world and how did he get to be who he was? That's exactly what we wanted to know. 2020 was offered a rare opportunity to go to death row and meet Oscar Bolin in the place he calls home. He spends 23 hours a day in a cell like this one, counting down the minutes till he gets to see his legal aide and wife, Rosalie, during her twice weekly visits. Here is 53-year-old Oscar Bolin today. Rosalie is steadfastly committed to you all these years after 27 years for your being in here. Well, I mean, this was not a situation where she came in naive or ignorant to the system or the circumstances. So is the relationship more business or is it it's both. I mean, romantic? It's, it's, is it, what is it exactly? It's both. Oh, I love her. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that. I mean, she's my best friend. And Rosalie is as committed as any wife to her husband, believing Oscar is no killer. But he does cop to one awful crime. But you did plead guilty to kidnapping and raping a woman at gunpoint 27 years ago today. 27 years ago in Ohio, yes. That was totally unrelated, had nothing to do with Florida. Right, but to some people, you're a convicted I, rapist. I, I, How can they believe that you're innocent of this other stuff? I was a very angry young man 27 years ago. 27 years later, would I do the same thing? No. I've learned a few things since then. He did admit that he was responsible for a brutal rape. Mm -hmm. How do you get that to sit well with you? Well, you have to understand. I mean, I know Oscar better than anyone, and he was also very young at the time. Oscar did accept responsibility. He pled guilty to that crime. And I believe if he had committed these three murders, he would have pled 
and he never did that. He's always professed his innocence. In fact, Rosalie and Oscar blame investigators for putting him on death row. While he says he can't recall where he was on the nights of the murders, he still insists he's an innocent man. Did you kill Terry Lynn Matthews? Absolutely not. Did you kill Natalie Holly? No. Did you kill Stephanie Collins? No. So how is it that you could be here? One man, Mike Malone, the FBI. He manufactured the evidence to fit the crime, and everybody got on board. Michael Malone, that discredited FBI agent who handled the critical evidence linking Oscar Boland to the murder of Stephanie Collins. Now, in two weeks, a new hearing. Could it lead to a new trial and another shot at dodging death? Do you even dare hope at this point that this may change things for you? You oh, on I, death uh, row? Of course. I mean, I mean, yes, but. At the same time, I know I, I'm a realist. But his wife has done the impossible before. I'm in the business of saving lives. If I have a bias against the death penalty, so be it. Just ask 42-year-old Seth Penalver, a dead man talking. He spent three years on death row living in a cell right next to Oscars, convicted for a triple homicide. Now, thanks largely to Rosalie, he's got a second lease on life. How did you get to know Rosalie? I'd see Rosalie in visitation with Oscar. I said, would you be willing to work on my case? Because I really believe in you. Rosalie dove into documents and came out with a smoking gun. Turns out a key witness was paid to testify against Seth at trial. You know, they paid one of the main witnesses with crime stopping money and hid that from the defense. It was a drug addict said whatever the cops wanted him to say. The jury found that very distasteful. That was a big thing in Seth's case, huge. In Seth's new trial in the winter of 2012, a jury was convinced that he's not guilty. He's acquitted of all charges against him. Do you think you'd be sitting here now if Rosalie had not come on board? Oh, no, I, w I wouldn't be. I would not be sitting here talking to you. I'd probably still be over there next to Oscar. Yeah, she's just that good. But even with his miracle working wife fighting at his side, Oscar is far from tasting freedom. He's still looking at a number of legal hurdles, not to mention a life sentence for the murder of Natalie Blanche Holly and a death sentence for Terry Lynn Matthews. But she's determined to get you out of here. Yes. Do you let yourself hope? Of course. That I maybe mean, one day you'll be but, together outside of here? I can't imagine walking out of this place and not being with her. And while he's dreaming of freedom, what about four other young women in the equation? Rosalie's daughters. You're a Catherine, right? Yeah. His stepdaughter, meeting him for the very first time. We made the decision. It sounded like a good idea. We did it. But I never could have envisioned the collateral effect, how it would affect you guys. When we come back, I can only hope you can accept my apology. Now back to 2020 and Deborah Roberts with evidence of love. There's collateral damage in every divorce. But Rosalie Boland's four daughters are different than most, with a mother in the spotlight and a stepfather on death row. Were you worried or concerned at all about making that decision and how it would affect your daughters? And I didn't think, because they were so small at the time, that I thought that it would hurt them. So you weren't trading your love for your family and your daughters for the love of this man? No, not for a second, no. Her daughters may see their complicated life differently. 25-year-old Catherine sorted out her emotions in a short documentary. Does he wear that gold chain? Yeah. Still? Yeah. He's allowed to wear that? Yeah. So I'm meeting him tomorrow. Is that what he looks like? Yeah. She hit you with some probing questions, too. Did you think about them? Right. What about your daughters? Like, what about, what about us? Well, I thought that y'all were going to be OK. I mean, you had a lot of people that loved you. Um, I think that um, y'all were incredible um, that y'all got through the adversity yourselves. I mean, did you ever think what we had to deal with? No, Even I didn't. I did, wasn't thinking that way, Catherine. No tears, no screaming, but some 20 years later, still questions and confusion. I never thought what that was going to do to them. 
I really didn't. Was it hard for you to admit that to her? Absolutely. It's still hard for me to admit that. Because as a mother, you don't want to hurt your children. But many people would say, come on, you've got to know if you married a guy who's in prison that that's going to affect them. I wasn't thinking. That's an honest answer. In the film, Catherine and her sister Christina relive their early years. Did any of your friends say anything to you? Not really. I mean, people were probably really embarrassed or really uncomfortable to talk about it. And everybody was just as shocked as we were. The most awkward part would be having them meet mom and then seeing their reaction when they meet mom because you know they're judging her from the moment they meet her. I mean, everybody assumes that she's crazy. Everyone's like, I can't believe you've forgiven her. I don't think forgiven's the word, but I think no matter what your mom does, I think it's an unconditional love. The documentary is called It's Nice to Finally Meet You, and Catherine means that literally. She takes her camera and her courage to death row to finally meet her stepfather, Oscar Bolin, for the first and only time. You're a Catherine, right? Yeah, nice to finally meet you. <laughs> I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> I imagine you have. She was a child when her mom and Oscar married and is the only daughter to have met him. I mean, you could have a, a bond with someone for life, but really, what does the marriage put in, into it? Do you think it was necessary? When your mother and I got married, I never envisioned that the, the, the publicity would be to so, so, I guess you say, so intense and how it would affect you and your sisters. And that part has bothered me. It has bothered me greatly. And I owe you an apology. And I do apologize. It's never my intent to cause you any personal harm or hardship or emotional pain. And I'm very sorry, Catherine. I can only hope you can accept my apology. Bye. Catherine agreed to make her film available to us. And though she and her sisters love their mother, they declined our request for an interview. They're reluctant to speak out publicly. Yes. Why? The media. They have their lives. They didn't sign up for that. It's unfair to make them have to go through the same things that I do. So I completely understand. Oscar Ray Bolin, the two broken out. The media attention surrounding Oscar and Rosalie will no doubt stir up again in the coming weeks with two important new hearings about the FBI scandal and the game-changing question. With the Michael Malone revelations, are new trials warranted? You want him to have three more trials? Absolutely. You know, when you were talking about killing someone and, and, and executing someone, is that really too much to ask? Some people would say, when is enough enough? It's been 20 years. For Anita Holly, who's still mourning her sister, it's more than enough. I think she's a sociopath. I don't think she understands the full range of, of human sensitivity. I, I think she's got to screw loose. I, I, I really do. The longer this case goes on, the more torturous the ordeal is for the families involved. Absolutely. Absolutely. Does that concern you? Is that something that you think about at all? I feel really sorry for them. I really do. I feel them. I have four beautiful children. I can't imagine. But I want them to understand that I wouldn't have dedicated 20 years of my life on something I truly didn't believe in. But if all her efforts fail and her husband is executed... I would still fight as hard for him in his death as I do in his life. I'm just not going to sit down and to be quiet because they can. I'm not going to do that. It's just not going to happen. You know, I will fight this till my last breath. In the next few weeks, two crucial new hearings coming up, one to consider that FBI Malone scandal and yet another to take on this bombshell, a supposed confession from someone who claimed he was the real killer of Terry Lynn Matthews. Decisions made there could lead to new trials for Oscar Bolin. Keep the conversation going tonight on Facebook and Twitter. And here's the question. Do you think Rosalie Bolin has been kidding herself or should she keep fighting?